Hello everyone, my name is Luise Mitte. I studied medical informatics at the OTH Regensburg and last year I wrote my bachelor thesis in cooperation with Fraunhofer Singapore about the automatic generation of two-dimensional medical images based on extracting statistical information from already existing databases. In this video, I'm going to give a short introduction on why anybody would want to generate medical images, how it can be done, and also show a few of my results. So first, what's the use of generating medical images? Well, artificial intelligence has improved a lot, especially over the last few years. Here, for example, you can see some abstracts about deep neural networks that can help doctors when classifying skin cancer, interpreting echocardiograms, and segmenting liver lesions. However, for such algorithms to work well, a lot of images are needed. For example, the algorithm to classify skin cancer uses over 200,000 images. Now, hospitals generate thousands of images every day, for example, CTs, X-rays or MRIs. However, because it's private data, it cannot just be shared with anyone. So it's really difficult for data scientists to get a hold of databases with as much as 200,000 images. The idea behind my bachelor thesis is to use those images to train an artificial neural network, to learn statistical information of those images, and based on that generate images that do not belong to actual patients. Those can then be shared online and data scientists can then use the images to train more algorithms that can then in turn help medical staff and patients on a daily basis. So how can images be generated? I used a method called Generative Adversarial Network, also called GAN, and it consists out of multiple neural networks. The first one being the generator and the second one the discriminator. The generator gets a random string of numbers as input and learns how to create images. The discriminator gets the generated images as well as real images as input. During training, it learns how to differentiate between the real image and the generated image. And here we can see the process of a GAN. During training, the discriminator and also the generator get better at their job until it's impossible for the discriminator to differentiate between the two image types. Now that the process is explained, here are some of my results. On the left side, you can see the original images and on the right side, the generated images. I use different methods to analyze those, but one that I really want to highlight is the training of a classifier. The task of a classifier is to predict the class of an image with as much accuracy as possible. In this case, the upper table shows the accuracy of predicting images for patients with pneumonia and those without a diagnosis. The lower table shows the classification of images with and without age-related macular degeneration. In the first round, I trained the classifier only with the original image data. For the pneumonia, that achieved an accuracy of about 91%. In the lower table, we can see that the database that had a lot less images to train with only reached about 70% accuracy. So in order to improve those results, I added up to 4,000 generated images. And what we can see here is that, especially for the dataset that originally had a few images to train with, the accuracy increased by around 21%. This shows that the generated images actually contain meaningful data. Of course, this method isn't perfect yet. For example, the generated images have been greatly reduced in their size. And in the end, it would be interesting to see if a trained doctor could actually spot the differences. As a conclusion, this method can be used to provide valuable image data to scientists that can in turn help to provide more reliable methods to support doctors and aid with clinical decision making and also therapies. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you have a great day.